Hello and welcome to another quick walkthrough of uh, some of the capabilities that we can have within the ESM console. Uh, in this example, part of the uh, ArcSight correlation platform. Uh, I'm actually going to be digging a little bit more into the console here, so the actual thick console as well as the web console, and some of the features you may not be aware of uh, that it actually can use to visualize some of the data specifically. Now we're going to start within the console and what we can see here is just a typical uh, console with regards to uh, active channels. So we can see a table, we can see the uh, information, we can see the uh, the data here, we can change all these and so on. That's all very simple and straightforward. Um, I, I'm not going to dig into detail. It, it's what you'd normally expect to see with a tabular format. So if you're over a particular column, you can actually right mouse click, uh, you can add columns, you can replace columns, you can remove them, you can do customized ones as well. Uh, uh, the customized ones are a very much overlooked feature. I'll dig into those another time. Um, but just to give uh, very simple and straightforward, you can, you can add and replace and, and do whatever you want there. That, that's okay. Uh, but what I want to dig into is some of the little features that you may not be aware of uh, specifically. So I'm going to take this little little icon down here in the corner and what you can see is we can change the way this is going to work and, and, and some of the options here. Now you may not see some of the bits here, uh, just the way that's been recorded, but I'm going to talk through those. Image viewers, I'm going to cover in a different uh, different video. Uh, there's some options here where we can change, we can have a background, we can put some logos on those as well. That's a little bit more complicated, uh, but I'm just going to deal with the charts. Now, uh, when you select the chart, you'll see a few options with regards to things that we can do. For example, we can throw up a uh, stacking area chart. And what it does, it, this is nothing sophisticated at this point, but what it does is it gives us a view of the priorities uh, of the event over this particular time frame uh, and gives us a view of what they are specifically. So it gives us a little bit more, a better view of the information that we see in the timeline up here uh, that we can see the data here as well. So you can see that it automatically updates according to the chart as well to, to the active channel and gives us some relevant data that we can see here as well. So it's kind of useful. It's kind of helpful. Uh, and it's a useful little feature that we can do here as well. Um, like I say, there is also an image viewer uh, option here, but that will be dealt with in a different video. But that's okay. What I really need to dig into is a little bit more detail around what we can do within the web console and an active channel. So if I just jump to the active channel here, now this is the web console. We can see it's the same active channel. Uh, well, what we now have is this little option here that says visualize events. Uh, this gives us the, the ability to take the events that are in this channel uh, and visualize them in a particular way. Now, what it will only do is it'll give me uh, the actual fields that I have available in this channel. So in this particular channel, I've only got a limited number of fields available because this is what I want to display. Uh, so what I'm interested in doing is I just select the fields that I want drag and drop them to the particular set that I'm interested in. Uh, I'm interested in these four. Notice it says a maximum of four, uh, and it tell you when it's reached. I'm interested in the address, uh, what devices are sending, and the names of the events. So we just hit visualize. It opens up another little tab within this, and it gives me some animated charts. It's nothing too sophisticated here. It's nothing too difficult for us to understand. But what we can do is we've got a nice little chart that we can look at and we can uh, view the information. So for example, if I want to see uh, particular events uh, that are linked to a firewall one. So if I click that, it'll then automatically then exclude the others. We can then see that by name that we can see this vast majority of data have been accepted. Only a limited number have been dropped. Uh, and as we actually do have some hits here on threat intelligence as well. Uh, we can see what the event count over time is. Uh, I can then, if I want to reset it, I can hit the reset here, or I can just click the one that I selected a minute ago and it just resets back out to here. What about this particular IP address? When I filter by IP address here, I can click that. Now it's going to give me that from this IP address, we get 443, 439, sorry, events here. We can see this is broken down by a whole bunch of uh, particular types uh, of the events and what are the actual events that we're getting underneath as well. So we get a whole bunch of information there as well. So it's very simple and very easy for us to filter through. Uh, again, I can just hit reset and it goes back to, uh, and I can view the data accordingly. Very simple, very easy. Expect this to get further advanced over time, but a very simple way for us just to quickly visualize. And again, I don't have to have these particular uh, fields. I can have different ones and then start to slice and dice the data accordingly. Nice and simple, very straightforward to use, really useful in digging down and seeing what events come from which log sources. I hope this has been useful. Thank you very much for your time.